And we're on. Welcome along to Bangkok Chit Chats, and it's a regional report. We're going to be speaking to Richard Plus One in just a moment from Hua Hin, but always not a plus because he's part of the furniture, which is a link to what we're going to be doing in just a moment. It's Andrew Sloan. Hi there. You're. What, what are you looking at? <laughs> looking at something. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> yes. You're live and you're on air, so look at me. <laughs> oh, God. How, how, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, very good. Very good. Looking forward to seeing what's happening in Hoa Hin. Uh, I mean, everything is suddenly changing. July 1st. Quickly. Yeah. Everything so, so, so quickly, just to see the effect. Yeah. yeah, I think it's almost, we are almost back to normal. Schools are open. Uh, yesterday they opened, so the big school at the end of my soy, that's uh, in, in full swing now. Uh, there's not so many masks being worn in the soy, although there's there's still quite a lot, but there's still people not wearing them anymore. And well, let's talk to Richard and see how it's like in Hua Hin, right? Yeah, exactly. See how it compares to up in Bangkok. Okay. Yeah, just... Richard's got Richard's got a mate with him, uh, Paffy, who uh, we'll be seeing in just a moment. Ding dong. Hello. Well, that was worthwhile, wasn't it? Yeah. Good morning. Hello. Ronnie, right yeah. <laughs> Hello, Paffy. Uh, hello. Um, I guess I, I'd ask a question. Um, can you just explain to me briefly what the whole concept of, of this podcast is? Or We're trying to, think, to tell people what's going on, going on in Hoa yeah. Hin. Uh, just to you know, give them a report. We cover things like COVID and, and how businesses have been affected. Uh, so okay. just in general, what's happening down here? It's a Hoa Hin report. I mean, the, the last time we talked to you, Richard, was uh, uh, Hua Hin was beginning to open. We'd gone to, I've yes. forgotten the numbers of the phases, phases A, B, C, D, one, two, three, or whatever. But the last right. time we talked to you, things were opening up. The light of the tunnel was there. Uh, and I'm beginning to feel now your latest report is that you've reached the light, I would have said. So what's the situation down there at the moment? Well, the situation's pretty good now, isn't it? Um, in fact, I think we're getting a lot of people down from Bangkok at the weekends. Um, in fact, some of the hotels are 80% full right now, which is the first time that they've been full for ages, you know, obviously. Um, any thoughts? Well, I mean, well, last night, actually, I had to go sniff around a little bit in town because obviously yesterday was the first time we were opened up for the bars. Obviously, no dancing, no karaoke or anything like no that. No fun. No fun. But uh, it, was, it was just nice to be out in the streets as bad as that might sound, hanging out in the streets. Um, went through Soy Bintabat and, you know, we had a couple of, uh, couple of beers at a few different places. Uh, my friend actually got a tattoo at uh, one of his local tattoo places. So they, I believe they're, they're up and running. Um, People not, can actually get haircuts now, which is good. Cuts, yeah, right. shaves, which I didn't do today because he didn't say we were going to be live. So I didn't get a <laughs> shave. I look like well, I'm a glad to see I'm glad to see, Richard, you've had your haircut. Which, which one did you, you have cut? <laughs> <laughs> Everything up there, <laughs> but yeah, the, it, it, it was it was nice in town last night just to get out and walk around and and there was uh, a few Westerners, a few Thais um, floating around. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it was good, isn't it? It was just the you know three four is, months. No one's been in that area, and there's been no there's been no activity down no activity. there at all. But even in the rev, even in the regular shopping malls, it's a lot busier. The car parks are getting pretty full. You know, things are just getting back slowly back to normal. But I, I do think some people are, are not remembering to keep the distance. Um, whereas, you know, conversely, most of the Thai people are wearing masks nearly all the time, which is terrific. Oh, yeah. I, I also did before we went into town for a, a, an hour or so last night. We did go to the 88 market. I think they call it the oh, bon, yeah. bon Kai market. Um, right by the roundabout on Soy 88. That's and a huge, huge outdoor restaurant and everything there the, on stage. Yep, yep, the loud, very loud Thai music was blaring last night. Um, so they had a band, there was like seven guys on stage. Uh, there were pretty much, all the tables were full, not packed, packed, but all the tables were full, a couple of people at each table. Most of the vendors were up and selling food and they were selling beer last night with music. So um, okay. it that was yeah. the first, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yesterday. So it was oh, it was one yeah. of the one of the best places. Yeah, Richard, um, you, you were mentioning the hotels at eighty uh, percent. I've just read in the news that the, the government have um, 
assigned, for want of a better word, 22 billion baht for, for, to boost tourism, which I guess hotels may be being subsidized, or I don't know, that they've said, you know, special packages for certain types of tourists to come over. So that 22 million, where, where is that exactly going? If, if, would the Hilton have any of that money or would they be getting relief on their room price or is it subsidies I haven't, or? I haven't read uh, where that money is exactly going, except I believe oh. there are package tours for domestic tourists, which are partly subsidized. I did read something about that. Um, yes. And, but, but I'm not sure whether any of that funding is going to the hotel properties. But when I was saying 80%, I was, tra I was talking with the general manager of the Marriott last week. You know, he said that they've been really full on. I mean, you can, I mean, I couldn't park my car in the car park. It was so full, um, which is the first. But, you know, not all the hotels are in such good shape. Um, the Centara, which is the old railway hotel, which is that beautiful colonial hotel down here in Hua Hin. That was due to open uh, on the 1st, and the owner, the day, a couple of days before, the owner just said, no, we want to hold off until August. So the Centara Hotel is not open yet, but there are some, you know, some of the other hotels, most of the other hotels are open or partly open, and the restaurants are operating, and they're more or less back to normal. Okay, Andrew, you're going to say something there, yeah? Yeah, so basically, uh, for this, uh, promotion uh, what they're saying is for Thai nationals this is not for uh, expats work permit holders or anything like that they will yes. get, get a, a 3,000 baht uh, credit they can use that on airlines etc and they can they can claim that back uh, but it's not for foreigners however what you'll find is now is you've got some absolutely fantastic deals JW Marriott is the example they, there was a point where there was, I think it was less than 2,000 baht a night, including breakfast. Uh, yep. So some really, really good deals out there. When people are looking for this, what they should be looking at is you know, maybe the hotel direct rather than going through Agoda and things like that. But also, there's lots of coupon, coupons out there which you can use. So when you're looking for a hotel, look at the, the hotel itself, look at the coupons that there's being offered, and you can get, you know, someone was telling me that in Phuket just now you can get a five-star hotel per night with breakfast uh, for two people, 1,500 baht. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can well, I stop that's you a just very there? good deal. Can I stop you just there for a moment on a couple of points? First of all, I've had a friend next door. He's been down to Cha'am and Hua Hin, and he was getting prices just like you said, at five-star hotels for under 2,000 baht. But what irks me is, and I thought this would be something to debate further down the line, all the phalangs that live here are phalangs that live here. They're not tourists. They've got resident permits or they're on, you know, one year permit, the work, work permit type thing or whatever. Yes. And they're still as a prejudice to them. And with, they're the ones that have stuck it out along with the ties. And these deals are not for them. Now, I don't get that. And I think that is, if I've got it right, I think that's wrong. Quite, uh, quite interesting, Andy. And I think you're, I, you know, I tend to agree with you. Uh, very interesting, the FCCT, the Foreign Correspondents Club of Thailand, was uh, holding a meeting last night. Yes, Richard Burroughs no. was there. And Richard said, why are you still charging 10 times the amount to go into a national park for foreigners than Thais? And they, you know, the group there said that, well, they are actually addressing that. And the TAT do actually realize now that it's not always a benefit. So, you know, slowly yeah. there is a reckoning and slowly there might well be an evening out of these differentiated. Of, I think so, Richard. Yeah. I, yes. I think so. Because they always use the, uh, the, what's the word? Uh, the crutch of saying, well, these Falang, they don't pay tax because they're here on holiday or whatever. And therefore, we need to get money from them to, to upkeep these places. But everybody funny. here is paying tax. Absolutely right. And this point was made last night as well. And you're absolutely spot on with that. I think the issue, yeah. is that the, the issue that we've got just now is, uh, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying. Yeah, but it's how to police it. Uh, uh, for a Thai, you walk up with an ID card and you show them an ID card. It says you're a Thai national. But when you, when you start looking at other things to do with us, you have different levels of people. 
if you've got a tourist visa, you shouldn't be entitled to anything because you're a tourist. But in actual fact, you're using that to live here. Yeah. If you've got a work permit, that's that's clear. But everyone gets upset when you get asked for the work permit. Yeah. So and then, then you get retirement visas. So you're gonna so people are gonna have to understand what the visa stamps and things are, and it's difficult to implement uh, just like that. Easy if you've got a card. Even if you've got a pink card, yeah, uh, uh, you know, with your yellow book and pink card, that's easy. But when you ask someone to look at the, the stamp, that's more difficult. And I'm not saying that it can't be done. Of course it can be done. But you know, you've got to have people who are trained to know what to look for. It could probably be done quite easily if you have a Thai driving license and show that. Because I, that shows that you're here. I, I, would, I, would, no. I, would, I would disagree a little bit because... Okay. We're not we're not looking at something that's that's uh, that's new. This is this is institutionalized. This has been around forever, and we're looking at changing something. This is not something that'll change overnight. I mean, changing things in Thailand is extremely slow. Um, anywhere, even though people anywhere, want anywhere. the technology, and I mean, no offense, but we'll probably all be dead by the time <laughs> things will change in the order. And, and, you know, working here for 14 odd years, having that work permit, going with my family to certain amusement parks or things. And it's, it's almost like I have to call ahead, tell them I'm coming, make sure that I get the promotion. And then they say, Oh yeah, here's your price. Um, and that can be difficult. It, it's something that I've been dealing with for, for years and years, but it's, it's not something that's a quick fix because from the young age, to the old, they think that, oh, well, you have more money, you can pay more. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not something that's... It's a that's, perception, isn't it? It's a perception, it's, and it's, it's yeah. been around for years yeah. and years and years, and it will take yeah, a I long we, time, we, I think. We all well, understand that, but I think, it's, I think we have to also... Uh, the implementation of it uh, yes. is, is, is the hard part. Uh, yes, you can say about a driver's license, but then you have the other person who says, well, I don't have a car, or I don't have a bike. So why shouldn't why but I have a work permit? So it's 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 the, the principle of what we're saying is all correct. The implementation is a little bit harder. And I saw that thing from uh, uh, FCCT uh, last night, and uh, the girl was saying about the the, the check in, China something, yeah. Uh, and she was saying, well, you want the tourist the app? You mean the app? The app? That's correct. The app. And she said, yeah. you, you want the tourists to use that? And this is one of the things they have to check in, check out, etc. So they can track them. I said, well, how are they supposed to follow it if it's all in Thai? So there's certain, there's certain practical things which haven't, haven't been really thought, thought through. But on the other hand, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you uh, just now, within, within the UK, as, since three of us are from the UK, do you actually see the UK putting things, all, all apps and things in Hindi, in Chinese? No, they, what they will say is they'll say, if you're here, you've got to speak English. You've got to follow the English rules. And that's effectively what the Thai is doing just now. Uh, admittedly, Thai is only spoken in Thailand. I get that. Yep. But we, I think sometimes, uh, yes, we should, we, should, we should look at pushing or pressurizing, or as TAT does, who can only influence. They have no decision-making power in the TAT. That's the Interior Department, Agricultural Department, and the Resources uh, Ministry. Yep. So they make the decisions. So I think sometimes it's patience. I've been here 30 years. I've been very patient. Uh, yeah, that's true. The point is that yeah. with different governments coming in, different coups, different crises, keeping things moving is, is a little bit uh, more difficult. And I'm, I have, uh, I don't agree with, with, with the things they're doing, uh, like we've just discussed. But I think, you know, I think we've got to, as you, as you said, pr you know, put pressure to, to look for uh, sustainable change. Okay, let's move on uh, yeah. away from discrimination and uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I agree with Andrew, things do, but maybe this is a perfect time to change stuff. So anyway, Richard, schools are back in Hua Hin. Are the beaches yes. open? Are they are they distancing on the beach? Well, the beaches, you know, it's Hua Hin. So the how, beaches are work? terrific at the moment. Yeah, the beaches are really good at the moment. Uh, not too busy, uh, but of course the tide's been in, hasn't it? But yeah. other than that, we, when, <laughs> when you're looking at the beaches, it depends what time. Um, one thing that I've noticed, I mean, I've been in Hua Hin for about six years, maybe a yeah. little bit longer. Um, I've never, ever seen so many high class or expensive cars yeah. ever well, in this time. That's the Bangkok crowd and coming Bangkok, down. And they are filling the beaches. The, yeah. this, the, I think the Hua Hin economy... Uh, is being helped like, like it historically has been 
by the Bangkok ties, but I mean, you're driving down to these little beach resorts and you're seeing Mercedes, Ferraris, yeah. Yeah. BMs, uh, BMs yeah. uh, Mercedes, but just like everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, Austin Martin, how do you say it? It's yeah. crazy cars everywhere. And you can tell that they're all coming from Bangkok and really escaping and looking for some freedom and some beach life. And the beaches have actually been quite packed. Um, so as my question, my question there would be: you, you say there's been an influx of the high-end cars, the high-end tourists from Bangkok, Thais. They didn't go before. If they didn't go before, why didn't they go before? Why are they going I, now? I, I, there's consistently. I mean, because my my old office used to be right, um, well, if people know, close to the airport. So that is the direct first entrance. And starting usually Thursdays, mostly Fridays afternoons, it was just a constant stream of, of traffic coming in. Um, they've always been there, but I think now more so, they see this as a better destination for all of Patia's goods and its bads. Um, I think most are avoiding the Patia side and they're coming this side. They, they like the better restaurants. They like that the beach is open. Um, I think Patia even closed their beach now, didn't they? Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, it's open yeah. now, I guess, but, you know, the deck chairs are one meter apart from each, yeah. uh, each other. But one point, how's the ferry doing? You know, it's, well, I say new ferry, but it's been operating now for quite a long time. From, it comes from Padilla to Hua Hin, no. is that right? Yeah, the ferry is not operating at the moment, Andy, and, and I think it might be a little while before they do that. Um, I haven't heard anything, because but Patia, it's not operating. Because Patia still is, is basically closed. I mean, and even if they do open, the people that would probably be going over there are more the golfers coming yeah. back and forth. Uh, mm. When I, I've taken it a couple of times, fantastic service, super quick to get from here to there and then back. Yeah. Um, if there's not too much chop, it's a nice, easy ride. You can yeah. sleep, you can eat That's on the I've boat. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I really enjoyed it. The prices is fair for going over there, but I don't think it's going to start for a while. We'd have to do some research, but yeah. there's nobody going over to Patia. Why? Everything's closed yeah. technically. Um, the golf How much is the here. ticket? How much is the return ticket? I think I so, think it was, I think it was two around grand? Two, two grand, two five maybe. Yeah. I paid. Yeah. It's about two yeah. something. It's two. It's two return. something for a return, yeah. which is great because it takes you right to the so the Bally Bally High Pier. Yeah, and yeah. you can just walk right into Walking Street. There's huge taxi racks uh, right out front. Um, you can have, call your Grab or your Uber or whatever. And they'll pick you up right there as well. So it's, it's very convenient. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of other things going on. Can we move on a bit? I mean, yep. they've, they've been cleaning the place up a bit. They, they've re-tarmacked all the roads down in the main part of Hua Hin. And somebody's been out with a yellow paintbrush and painted new lines everywhere, which is nice. great. It's a nice, clean, smooth road. But, you know... <laughs> are they, are they uh, yeah, are they straight I, I, lines? <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, because the, the sides are very, very tight and the parking's very tight. Yeah. Before they had at least a little motorcycle lane, but that yeah. seems to have evaporated yeah. into yeah. the abyss. Yeah. Um, so true. it's a little bit more difficult. But again, motorcycles in Thailand, they find their way oh, through. They find their way through, yeah. no problem. But of course, as things have been eased up, easing up here over the past couple of weeks, there's been a bit of an increase in crime you may have read in the press about uh, some people being arrested on the trains with drugs, some under the, uh, under the carriages. And the woman last week had 10 bags of drugs on the overhead racks above her. And, you know, so the police have been tipped off and stuff. And then just, I think, yesterday or the day before, police found um, crates of cigarettes that have been smuggled over the border from Myanmar. Um, so, you know, that kind of activity seems to be on the increase. Um, having said that, the governor and Prachua have just opened... Um, yesterday, the border between Prachap Kirakan and Myanmar, the, the uh, I can't remember the name of it, it's the Singkong border, I think it is, yeah. down there. Yeah. And that's where they do a lot of trade down there. Have you been down there? It is I, interesting. I've been down there, but I, I'm not sure if we can go back and forth through that border. You can't go through yeah. that border now. At least no. you can't now. It's only open for goods at the moment. Goods um, and, and a lot of uh, Burmese workers, yeah, I, I think right. so. But. but I think they're only doing goods at the moment. It, there's very limited communication going back there. and forth yeah so yeah it's been a long time since i've been down in that area right well um, the thing is you know i yes. I, I know i know uh, richard you are who are in through and through and i, I love to see that because i've known you for a long long time when you lived in other places bangkok being one of them 
and I have this feeling, you know, the, the last time we, we talked to you, you were showing us the, the, the murals or, or slash graffiti, whatever. The paintings, on, yeah. On the, yeah. And the general vibe about Hua Hin. Hua Hin's always been there. I've been here for 35. It's always been there, but it hasn't been my number one top destination. But right. I see it becoming now, this is like being a stepping stone. And I think maybe it's a sort of a, a rebirth of Hua Hin. I think they're going to reopen, as it were, uh, correctly, uh, they're going to cater for all sorts of tourists, not the people who want to go to Pattaya, but families and maybe higher end. And I can see Hua Hin prospering in the future. Oh, I think so. It's definitely on the up and up, isn't it? And of course, they've got the twin track railway coming through. Um, exactly. Plans to expand um, parking lots on the runways at the airport so they can accommodate more aircraft. They're not flying yet but I think they will fairly soon. Mm. Um, there seems to be this overhead road coming up around behind the Wahin railway station, yeah. which is a mm. uh, flyover, I think. There's, it seems like there's a lot more uh, projects. There's a little bit more infrastructure opening yeah. up, uh, especially if you're going south of here. Mm. Um, what I've noticed, obviously, in my business, I work in property or I supply furniture for homes. Beautiful world furniture, that is. Beautiful world <laughs> furniture. Can't beat it. A little plug. Nice um, plug. Shout out to um, them. <laughs> shout out to Beautiful World. Um, and what I've noticed are a lot of the higher end homes, the villas that are being built. And I was really, I was really negative about it when we had the whole sh shutdown and things like that. But I, I think now that people have been in this area for so long and they've sent out their pictures, they've been on Facebook. I mean, the rest of the world was in mostly lockdown. I mean, people were still going to the beach. They were sitting in their three, four bedroom pool villas, drinking wine. They have a nice green garden to sit in. They can walk around their community inside their blocks or outside. There's lots of forests. Uh, there's lots of uh, pineapple fields. There's lots of little hills people go on. Everyone was still walking their dogs. And I think that image of safety, security, I mean, as much as there's a little crime here, but it's nothing compared to some of the other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really opened up, I think, a lot of people's minds to this is a great place. And it's throughout Europe, it's the Australians, it's the Americans, obviously Hong Kong and Singapore were the things that are going on in Hong Kong. I mean, there should be a lot more people moving directly here because the Gulf, because of the beach, because of the shopping, because of yeah. the airport. Hopefully that'll get up and running. I know there's a budget put into that. Um, so there's so many things that are, that are just primed to go um, and the land prices are still fairly reasonable con in comparison to Koh Samui or Phuket or Pattaya. And, you know, you got kind of two islands and then I love Pattaya, but it's dirty yeah. town through and through. So it's, it is what it is. Um, well, so yes, really yes. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. What it is is not necessarily what we want it to be, but it is what oh, it is. Sometimes it is. Sometimes. <laughs> Well, I think but that one, as one far thing, as who went in this area, it's fantastic. One thing you're mentioning about the golf. Uh, so I see that uh, on the 8th of July through to the 10th, you've got the uh, ladies ladies golf championship. Yeah, LGP, LGPA. Where is it? I've lost it. Yeah. Uh, is that is that at Banyan or Black Mountain? Both. It have to be at one yeah. of them. Both. Okay. So, yeah, so the, it's the LPGA. Uh, oh, sorry, it's, it's at the Royal Hoa Hen Golf Club for that one. But ah, it, okay. another one, another thing called the Triskel Trophy. Uh, it's and that's the Irish. Be, it's Irish, yeah. It's going to be the 28th to 30th. It'll be, be at the Banyan Golf Club and the and uh, Black Mountain Golf Club. And that's being organized uh, by John Murphy. And if anyone wants to yep. contact him, his email is 2020 the triskiltrophy.com, uh, which I'll put in the description. So yeah, I think we'll be, we'll be taking our radio station there, actually. Uh, oh, cool. so I will be there. Yeah. Well, what I also heard was uh, that uh, the island of Ao Manao, yeah, mm. uh, that that's, op that's going to open, but they're putting limitations of 1,700 tourists per day, which I think is quite a lot in itself, and a minimum of 500 people can stay in the hotel overnight. Uh, and, and then I had mentioned about the real, that railway hotel, I mean, I think I've stayed there and it's absolutely fantastic. 
beautiful hotel. It's been here as long as I've been. Well, it's been here a lot longer than I've been here. But I can remember with my parents bringing when they were alive and, you know, the beautiful shrubberies they've got and the old colonial type atmosphere okay. it had was absolutely brilliant. Right. It's a lovely hotel. Lovely right. hotel. Well, yeah, it is. Absolutely. Well, Something well, else that's going on okay. that you might be interested in. Um, Correct. Last, uh, the other day, I took part in, a, in like a, a test run of a treasure hunt, uh, which is being organized by Monsoon Valley. And Monsoon Valley are the vineyards inland, about 40 minutes drive from here. And the uh, organizers there, they also have a, a lounge, a restaurant, wine bar here in town. So they organized a treasure hunt. So they, they invited about 40 of us to their, to their place here in town and gave us some clues and we all had to drive to different restaurants around town and then different venues and pick up more clues from the next place, which then eventually took us out to the vineyard. Now, wow. one of the That's interesting, clever. yeah, it was a really interesting and great fun activity. And they're gonna be doing it again for real. If you'd like to take part on that, it'll be on the 26th of July. And I think it's about, it's, I'm not sure of the price, about 1,000 or 1,200 baht, but it's, it's really good value and you'll get lunch and everything thrown in. But what I did like and what I learned that day was a new place. Um, there's a, a set of caves about 30 minutes drive from here. Um, and inside the caves are the most amazing stalactites and stalagmites that you know, I've ever seen. And wow. Loads of bats. And it's on the side of a hill and next to a temple. You've got to drive up a dirt road to get to it and then climb up into the cave and take your flashlight and torch. Then there's somebody usually around who can show you around the caves. And they're huge, just only 30 minutes drive from here. And they're called the, the Lublé Caves, L-U-B-L-A-E, Lublé Cave. Well worth checking out if you're around this part of the area. Okay, if you could send us that details of that, we'll put it in the description below the video. Will because do. I think a lot of people that live in Thailand look for somewhere to go when they go to Hua Hin. Because I always thought Hua Hin was very limited in, in what to do. It was very nice, mm. but I used to call it the one horse town back in the day because that's what it was. It was one road and there was this and that and a few hotels. Yeah. And that, but it's totally different now. And that cave thing, that sounds fun for the it family or whatever, right? Yeah, yes, you can take the family. It's quite safe. And, you know, yeah, it's just a really great afternoon out for the whole mm. family. Um, okay. So there we go. I'll send you details on that. Okay, we'll have to wrap All right. up. So uh, any, any last, last, last uh, comments? Last <laughs> thoughts? Well, you mentioned schools earlier. The schools did open on the 1st, and our kids went back to the school here, Yam Sa'ad School, which is in the center of town, more or less. Phew. Phew. And uh, <laughs> it's really, really interesting to see how they've organized the, the, the social distancing. Everyone has a temperature taken and the kids are quite well disciplined and told and understand what they have to do. And the classes uh, are well spaced out. And I think it's been very well organized by local schools. So that was good. A couple of final words from you. Um, what, what were we talking about? Uh... Well, we're just about <laughs> Say goodbye, really. I, oh, say goodbye. You shouldn't have gone away. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Emergency phone call. Yeah. Um, okay. I, last one, just try to stay positive. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've noticed in, I play a lot of sports here. Um, it keeps me uh, a little bit more sane. I play pickleball with the Huahin Pickleball That's Group. That's good. I do jujitsu with the uh, Fight Nation up at El Elite Fight Club. Uh, and I play hockey or floorball with the Swedish hockey guys or the I think it's called bandy or floorball here in Hua Hin. So uh, we All do right. a lot of sports, meet a lot of people. It's, it's good energy. Um, with the guys, it's great because um, we're getting a little aggression out. It seems like people, yeah. everything from the finances to the economy to not being able to travel. I mean, personally, I'm a little pissed off. I haven't been able to see my family in about five months, my children. Um, mm. So it's, it's being able to find outlets going it's out. It's a stress walks. reliever. Yeah, well, Pappy, stress it's been stress. nice, it's been oh, nice talking with you. Yeah, and Richard, thank you for introducing him because I think to have you on again would be great if that's at all possible uh, next yeah. time that we speak to each other. Okay, let's see if we can work something out. That'd be great. Andy and Andrew, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and don't forget to listen to 102.5.
<laughs> they have it on all day here. <laughs> it's good. That's a start. Okay, Richard, Puffy, thank you very much. And thank uh, you. stay safe and we'll speak soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Wow, that was interesting. That was. I enjoyed that tremendously. <laughs> Puffy <laughs> seems a good guy, doesn't he? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's it. We've got to move on. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. And uh, thanks to all our subscribers. If you're new to the channel, subscriptions mean a lot to us because with them, we can do a lot more as we're sharing it and liking it. But sharing is important to us because it gets us to a new market. I think that's about it from Bangkok Chit Chat Regional Board, Hua Hin, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Right. Bye. <laughs>